we have to have the felt experience beside us of somebody who has been in a similar place. Nobody's ever in the exact same place, but in a similar place. So they have some comprehension of what the territory feels like. Because if you have not had the experience, you really cannot understand what the territory feels like. You think you do, but you don't. And the one thing that we learn that is transferable, I think, is that we learn what it's like to live with an injury that is both neurological and physiological, both body and brain, so that we know the complexity of what it takes to reorganize ourselves. And in that way, we have a depth of compassion available that even if we don't know what the exact experience of somebody else might be, we are close enough that we can hold and appreciate their struggle. And let me add, deeply psychological too, the injury is. Deeply psychological. Absolutely. Many of the stroke survivors are overachievers type, working very hard, very ambitious, on the set, they fall off the ladder. Right. And nothing seems to be left. They have to structure a completely new life. Even driving out, take a shower, is now a challenge. And there's a great deal of work to come to terms with what it means to make a life. And there's a lot to be learned about how to make a life that's different from that pattern of high achievement. And the goal here is for us to make satisfying, rich lives, however we are, as we work on our recoveries. That's the goal. It's not to get to a certain place, but it's to learn to live in a certain way. It's different. Yeah, the high goal is uh, out of touch for me. And yet, the level of accomplishment that Rita has is staggering. It's absolutely staggering. Who do you know who was a, who was a high achiever who could go to school and study a new form of Chinese medicine when she couldn't talk. And to be able to bring herself to that kind of level of self-actualization. I went to um, the uh, Akitonics seminar, and so it was two days, and uh, I made uh, stuff for the, the seminar, because I don't pay for, for it, I, I make stuff for it. And it was so wonderful that everybody asked me for different recipes. You know, so it was, you know. So, so we're talking about high achievers here. And this is the person who's going to her continuing education classes. And the way she's working with that is she's bringing everybody food. So she's not only studying and learning what she needs to know and keeping up with her certification, but she's also feeding the entire class. So what I, the point I want to make is that it's not that we give up doing important and useful things. It's not at all what happens. We just learn to live in a different way. Yeah, and I want you to know that my hand is still, you know, like, like this. That, you know, I have this hand and I have this hand. You know, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, you can learn to make, you know, lives of painting or golf or uh, uh, mechanics or something like that. You just need to know how, how to do it. But it is a big psychological change. And one of the biggest psychological changes is that when we have a catastrophic injury, when we're in the middle of an active life, 
we learn for the first time probably just how vulnerable we are. And that's a heck of a shock. A heck of a shock. Nobody really believes that he or she is vulnerable. What is so incredibly important and what can't be overestimated enough is that we live inside these bodies and we have the opportunity to know so much more clearly right where we are, right where we are in the edge of that rehabilitation. So we know what that next step can be. And we know what that change in balance can be. And our therapists, the all three of them standing around you, they can look at us, they can make guesses, they're experts, they have good guesses, but they don't know. Yeah, correct. They don't know what next little movement I need to make to pull myself into the next step. And if I can learn to listen to that and feed it back to them in whatever way, even with Rita being able to do it with facial expression and gesture, she couldn't talk. If I can feed it back to them and they'll deeply listen, together we're going to find a way for me to walk much faster and much more securely. Our participation is so incredibly important. 